Hey, I'm Victor Lucas. This is my pal, Johnny Millennium. You are watching Film Fury. We're going to review Suburbicon, but first, a special thank you and a shout out to our pals at the VFS School of Film. All right, Suburbicon is a brand new movie that is directed by George Clooney. Ever heard of this guy? No, is he uh, a young heartthrob for yeah, women? I don't know. He's an up and comer. Uh, and it stars Matt Damon and Julianne Moore. Oscar Isaac is in this thing I, as well. Yeah, we've got to talk about that in a bit. Yeah, yeah, but this is a subversive kind of take on the suburban upbringing and the 1950s. The rise, of, yes. yes. It's like a, the fallout version of it, kind of. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely reminded me of the fallout universe, but it's, uh, it's not sort of out of the realm of the world that the Coen brothers play in. The Joel and Ethan Coen make movies that are kind of subversive that, yes. and they kind of poke that kind of world in the eye a little bit, that sort of normalcy that we see, the uh, environments that we see painted in lots of other movies out yes. there, like Pleasantville is one that yeah, comes to like mind. Yeah, like a beautiful white suburban neighborhood. Yes. Where it's perfect for everybody except anybody who's not white. Yeah. And that was what was so terrible. This movie starts and a black uh, family movie moves in yep. and they are not welcomed by the, the neighborhood yep. and I thought the movie's going to be about this mm -hmm. and the movie is not about that. No. That takes place in the back of it all. It's a that's subplot. A, it's yeah. a subplot. It's yeah. another story but we deal with a bigger story that's Matt Damon and his family yeah. and his wife uh, has had a terrible uh, car accident. She's in a wheelchair and then Something terrible happens to this family. Yeah. They get involved in a bunch of gangsters. Things go south really fast. And before we know it, we're in Fargo. Yeah. We're absolutely in Fargo. And there is that Coen Brothers connection. And I think that Clooney has worked with the Coen Brothers. He's, he's made some movies with them. Uh, I think he's got a deep-seated romance with the way that they build their stories and their characters. And certainly there are echoes of incredible background actors with really stylized kind of performances that just jump off of the screen, they connect to the era, they in a second sort of underline their value to the picture and it's, yes. it really it's is cast, solid. It's cast really well. Yes. Like all the casting, I, I, I'm going to just jump right ahead. Yeah. Oscar Isaac, he came onto the screen <laughs> and I'm like, oh, who is this guy? Like this is, he's playing a cool character and I'm like, Oh my God, it's Poe Dameron. <laughs> he was so good and he's, it was so neat to see him. He's an amazing he's actor. He's an amazing actor. Yeah. To see him go off left center and do yeah. something totally different. Yes. And I've seen him in a bunch of films and I couldn't believe the different kind of role. I've seen him do all these different roles, but this was a different one for him and he pulled it off. Well, I love the, um, it, it's got a, a kind of a radio play kind of vibe to it. And in fact, the I think the standout actor in this is the little boy who plays Nicky, really Matt Damon's son in this, who just is so powerful. He's got wordless scenes in this where he's just looking back and forth at two actors. But you're feeling the emotion of those moments so, so intensely. So strong, so intelligent, so convicted, and you just, you feel for this oh, kid, man. All the way to he, the end. Right? He's just turned to, gone through the ringer by the end of this movie and what a performance because who knows where his career goes from here but I mean this is some incredible stuff I would suspect that this kid is going to be cast in a lot of things going forward I think all the casting is really really good yeah, absolutely Matt yeah. Damon and Julianne Moore are they two of the best working actors out there and they're they're, they're terrific and as, Matt uh, Damon was good in this because less was more with his character yes. I wanted his character to freak out but by him not freaking out he said so much more oh, he's He's boiling with rage inside. and stress. And he's just and, keeping yes. silent and trying yeah. to keep focused. And yes. uh, Juliet Moore is really good. The stereotypical housewife of the 1950s <laughs> and kind of scary. Oh, she's she good. Scary. Yeah, she's very good at, you know, like a freaky undertone, right? Like everything is fine. Everything's, everything's fine. Nothing is yeah, fine. I'm not going to stab fine. you in the eyeballs. You know? I, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's some really tense moments. And I, yeah. I really didn't know what this film was about. Yep. I just thought, okay, it's directed by George Clooney. I think for a directing uh, point of view, he did very good. Yeah. This is a very solid little film. Yeah, the, one of the last movies that he did was Monuments Men with Bill Murray and a cast of thousands, John Goodman and stuff, and that was a really, really dull, boring, went nowhere <laughs> film. And it had a, a grandiose kind of look and it, you know, it was very austere and it looked beautiful and it was you know, presenting a lot on the screen. And this is not that. It's got a very specific tone, a very specific quality. The, uh, the way it's framed, the sets and things like that, it's all kind of hemmed in and controlled. Very well. And I think to, to a fault though. Oh, I think do it's, you? Yeah, I think it's a little 
I, I don't think it went absurd enough. And that's where the Coen brothers really, like if you look at a movie like Blood Simple, their classic crime ah. noir film, these guys, the, the Coen brothers are not afraid of raising Arizona. They're not afraid to just go to these absurdist levels. You mentioned Fargo earlier. Yes, yes. And I've, Where there's a lot of humor in Fargo. Yeah. You're laughing at how absurd the situation is. Yes, and I feel like the, the, it's missing that in I, this. I think it's missing a bit of humor, but yep. I don't know if it can. This is supposed to be a very serious story. It's a really weird story. Yes. Well, I don't know if I can recommend this movie because it's so weird and twisted. Twisted and yeah, I, I don't know. Like you wouldn't bring your family. I kind of wonder who this movie is for. It's almost like it's self-indulgence by George Clooney in a way. Yeah. See, he has this amazing little script. He's like, I want to do it, but it doesn't mean that you should do it. Yeah, and I feel like you know poking fun at the suburban ideal, that idyllic dream, has been played out. It's been it done, has, and, yes. you know, and, and frankly, Pleasantville is the first thing that you think about, and that was a better movie than this sure. was. It was a darker that, and yeah. a richer so film you're kind of, than this What is. you're saying is, what did this bring to the table yeah. that's brand new, and that was gonna make you go to the movie theater to see it? Right, and uh, you know, I think you can find some joy and some real accomplishment in the performances, and I think the script is tight, and it, it, it all sort of, well. it, yeah, yeah. It clicks together, but it doesn't really elevate it doesn't surprise you that much. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the idea that the, the perfection that we crafted for ourselves with that suburban dream and the dangers of it is realized in this movie. And I think that there is no, there is no I idyllic situation or idyllic way to grow up. And I liked the juxtaposition of the, the black family going through their torment and their hell with this supposed beautiful, perfect white family going through hell. And I don't think hell. it's pulled off enough. It just feels like two different stories. Yeah. I almost, when the movie began, I thought, it's going to be about this black family. And they're going to connect a lot it's gonna more. It's going to connect, and it yeah. doesn't. And so it's two different stories. And I understand they're doing that, yes, this, fa this family's this way, this family's this way. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But I never felt really connected with that. Yeah. And, and even at the ending, I was like, I still don't feel connected with it. Yeah. It just I kind of ended. I was like, okay, that was a story. That was Fargo. I'm, I'm stretching. Yeah. It, it is Fargo, though. It, it's yeah. the uncomfortability it, of a situation gone wrong. Except Fargo I'm, took it to a level. It's an amazing that film. It, exactly. It, it's an, an indelible yeah, picture. I don't mean as a, as a compliment to the film. Yeah, and I'm I don't, saying it's almost a, an homage. They're homaging it. Oh, but yeah. They're, they're, not, they're reaching for it, but they're not quite getting they're it. They're not I'm getting it. You. No, I agree with you. You know, and all this becomes is a parable for how broken the American dream can really be, you know, for, for many people out there. And... In that sense, it's it's got some power to it, and it's a competent movie. I don't think it's going to stick with you. I don't think no. we're going to be quoting from it. I thought it also had pacing issues. I felt like that it could have had sequences sort of snipped and trimmed, and it could have moved along a little bit quicker. Yeah, I agree uh, with you on that for sure. But it, it wasn't it wasn't not entertaining. It was entertaining. It, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I only watched. I looked at my watch a couple of times. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm kind of I'm kind of done. And when it ended, I was like. Okay, that was a movie, and yeah. I told the story, and I'm out of here. I did. I really. You can studio. You can quote Johnny Millennium on that, right? It was okay. It was a movie, and I was there, and now I'm out of there. And I'm out of there. That, Johnny that, Millennium, yeah, Film Fury, 2017. <laughs> That's the end of it. I, man, I'm gonna put it to you. What are you gonna rate this movie? It's a seven. You know, it's not. Yes. It's not bad. It's not great. It's, it, it's just. We're gonna get good. run over. We're no. gonna get run over. So I'm gonna no. say a 6.5 for me. That's all it's gonna get. All right, now. Listen, if you would like to uh, make a better movie than Suburbicon, you know you can do that. If you go to the one-year program at Vancouver Film School, go to vfs.edu for more info.